The rules dictate that it is now time for members' statements. I recognize the member from Oshawa. Thank you very much, Speaker. Our community has just lost a longtime friend, activist, New Democrat, and force of nature. Susie Boyle passed away recently, unexpectedly, at just 61 years old. Many folks in New Democrat circles will know her and will miss her energy, her passion, her excellent laugh, and fiery spirit. Susie has been a longtime New Democrat, and she was one of our local originals. She was active with the party locally and provincially, but also was a relentless voice with the retirees in Oshawa on local and environmental issues. She was active in her church, local legion, and community in many ways. She has been a loving and tireless caregiver to her mother, and she is survived by her sister, Terry Boyle, and her sons. I have shared Susie's voice in this room many times as she wanted the government to hear what it was like for folks living with disabilities and wanted, be, wanted to be a voice for making things better. Speaker, as we're headed into an election, many of us are connecting with our friends and supporters and are rallying volunteers to get campaigns set up. I met Susie right at the beginning of my political journey, and she amazed me with her loyalty and commitment to a young woman trying to get into this arena. Just about everyone with a phone would have talked to Susie around election time, as she was a giant on the phones. She knew every member in their story and history, and she had worked on every campaign long before my time. Susie was fiercely loyal and passionate and sometimes just fierce. <laughs> she was a small woman with a huge heart, filled with fight and fury and love and loyalty. She had personal stories of Jack Layton, Andrea Horvath, and Jugmeet Singh, and had a million memories of our local campaigns and candidates. I know that Sharon and Nestor and Sid and Larry and Andrew and Julia and Willie and Peggy and Gord and all the folks who have been in the thick of it in Oshawa and in the NDP would be able to share a lifetime of Susie stories, too. This International Women's Day, I'm thinking of Susie Boyle, who was a tiny ball of light that took my hand to invite me into politics, was a true and loyal friend <clears throat> who never missed a Women's Day breakfast at the Union Hall, who was a bundle of spirit and who believed in better for people and our community, and she was committed to doing the work to make it happen. Susie was small but mighty, and our community will miss her in a big way. Thank you. Thank you, and Speaker's prerogative. She came from Oshawa to Windsor during my by-election and helped me. Thank you so much. Next member statement, the member from Brantford Brent. Thank you, Speaker. This past Friday, March the 4th, I had the distinct, distinct pleasure of joining my colleague, the MPP for Mississauga, Aaron Mills, and Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, Culture, Industries, and other MPPs, local mayors, and other dignitaries to celebrate the Grand Watershed Trails Network launch of a new website and video. This initiative will help them reach a wider audience and increase awareness of the trail system and encourage tourism and exploration of the Grand River Trail areas. The Grand Watershed Trails Network mission is to develop the Grand River Watershed as a living storybook of adventure and reconnect communities with the Grand River and with each other by partnering with all stakeholders. We are raising our family in Brant County and often enjoy the trail system and the unique natural beauty that it protects. This video and website will not only promote the Grand Watershed Trails Network, but Brantford Brant as a whole, showcasing the amazing community we all call home. Mr. Speaker, this is a project that I was involved in from the early stages about eight years ago when I was president of the Brant Waterways Foundation. It is so wonderful to see this trail network coming along from the headwaters to the mouth of the Grand River. I encourage you to take a look at www.grandtrails.ca. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Speaker. We've heard this government say they care about seniors, yet seniors are finding it harder and harder to keep up with rising costs. They say they're addressing the housing crisis, yet prices have skyrocketed. Young people have given up the dream of home ownership. I asked the Premier, have you looked at the price of gas lately? You have nothing to celebrate. Ontario residents are breaking under the cost of gasoline right now. I'm saying to the Premier, his government can and must play a role in offering relief at the pumps for Ontario residents. We offered solutions, recommended using the Ontario Energy Board to try and shine a light on this industry and ban gouging where it occurs. The Premier rejected that plan. I asked this government, what is your plan? How can you sit back and do nothing? How is this not a crisis worth resolving? 
Oil companies are making billions in profit. Today, the price of gas in Niagara Falls is 183 a litre. In Niagara, many people can't get to work, to school, or to hospitals without a car. We know gouging occurs when prices go up 14 cents overnight or just before a long weekend. We know there's a lack of transparency when it comes to refineries. All this leaves consumers open to price gouging. This government that claims to care about people's pocketbooks, if that's the case, why are they refusing to even debate legislation that might help at the pumps? Right now, they need this government to step in and use every tool available to them to bring down gas prices. Give residents a break. We need a provincial government response to gas prices, and we need it now. Thank you. Member statement. The member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to mark the passing of Marcel Lapierre, a friend, a municipal colleague, and recently a valued member of our consistency staff. Marcel was born and raised on a family farm just outside of Martintown. And he graduated from Charland High School in Williamstown and sought employment at the local Cornwall Scotia branch, where he met his wife of almost 50 years, Suzanne. Marcel moved over to the municipal government side, serving as clerk and CEO of the former township of, of Schlottenburg and was chosen as CAO for the newly amalgamated township of South Glengarry. After 30 years of municipal service, Marcel retired in 2006 to a life of golf, curling, and volunteering with the local Cornwall Lions Club. Nine years ago, Marcel joined my consistency staff to continue his role, the role he excelled in, serving the public. Marcel's many friends would stop by our office and catch up on the latest political news or just have a good laugh. He had a way of putting things into perspective, and he was invaluable during my time as mayor and MPP. Marcel leaves behind him his wife and best friend, Suzanne, his son, Rick, and his daughter, Julie, son-in-law, Nathan, and daughter-in-law, Jennifer, his granddaughters, Carrie and Addison. He will be missed by his co-workers, Marilyn, Alan, and Greg. So rest in peace, my friend. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, Speaker, I'm heartbroken. Um, like so many Canadians of Ukrainian descent, my grandparents immigrated to Canada in the early, early part of the last century, uh, settling in the prairies and to tame the land and to feed our nation as farmers. Uh, in the early part of this century, my brother and my father traveled to Moscow several times to initiate the adoption of our dear Misha, a young boy in uh, the town of Tula, uh, who now, uh, so my brother, the Canadian of Ukrainian descent, living in Toledo, Ohio, married to an American, adopts a Russian who now serves in the U.S. military, uh, stationed at Fort Bragg. I am heartbroken. Uh, the illegal invasion and subsequent war against Ukraine by the Putin regime has shown the world that democracy is under attack. The atrocities shown by Russian forces against civilians already constitutes war crimes. We have been inspired by the resolve of the Ukrainian people to defend their homeland and their right to sovereignty, to self-governance and identity. They fight not only for themselves, but for all of us who believe in democracy, peace and human rights. But resolve alone will not win this war. The global community has shown incredible solidarity with the people of Ukraine. As Canadians, we must commit to supporting defensive and humanitarian resources to Ukrainians who remain on the front lines to defend their country and to those fleeing for safe harbor in neighboring countries and abroad. We see that the Ukrainian fight for self-determination has become a fight for self-preservation, and we need to help. I urge the Ontario government to increase their financial support and to develop mechanisms for matching donations from Ontarians. Let no one be mistaken that this war against democracy will be, con will be contained only to the borders of Ukraine. This is an attack on the values and freedoms that many of us, many Canadians, have fought and to defend uh, and continue to this day. I stand in solidarity with Ukrainian Canadians in condemning the, con the criminal actions of the Putin regime. And to the Ukrainian people, I say, 
Slava Ukraini. statements member statements the member for Cambridge thank you speaker today I am delighted to speak on International Women's Day a day where I and many others embrace and reflect on the differences between men and women and the beauty that lies within them women come in many different shapes colors and sizes and are each beautiful in their own ways the stay-at-home mom that struggles to stay awake while nursing her baby for the third time in a night the businesswoman taking charge of her own company, the woman who juggles both worlds of working inside and outside the home, and some of us do it while wearing foreign shields too. The strength and softness of women, this unique balance should be embraced and celebrated. Why do we women feel the need to measure ourselves and our achievements to men? Use yourself as your own measuring stick. Speaker, in the immortal words of Margaret Thatcher, if you want something said, ask a man. If you want something done, ask a woman. So today, I want to thank all women, all the mama bears who get up every day and do the hard things, who deal with the pushback, who stand apart from the crowd, who don't shy away from confrontation, who stand up for our kids. This day is for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Perry Sound, Muskoka. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning to congratulate Gray J Sales and Distribution for winning the Merchandising Excellence Award at the inaugural Ontario Made Awards. The Canadian manufacturers and exporters established these awards to celebrate outstanding manufacturers and retailers that help consumers make informed choices by increasing the awareness of Ontario made products. Gray J Sales and Distribution is headquartered in Huntsville. Terry Sound Muskoka and focuses on bringing Ontario made products to stores across the province and around the world. This includes products from local businesses like Lake of Bays Brewing in Baysville, Muskoka Brand Gourmet based in Huntsville, and Muskoka Springs Craft Beverages in Gravenhurst. Since 2016, Grey J Sales has distributed the high quality products of these local businesses and others so consumers across Ontario can get a taste of what Perry Sound Muskoka is all about. As we emerge from COVID-19 pandemic, which caused hardship for many small businesses, I encourage all Ontarians to make an effort to buy Ontario-made products. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy, and they provide our friends and neighbours with valuable jobs and livelihoods. I congratulate Grey J Sales and Distribution on this award and all the local businesses in Perry Sound, Muskoka that Grey J Sales partners with for their success. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. I live in Brampton, one of the largest and fastest growing cities in Canada. But it's a city right now where people are struggling. They're struggling because for 15 years, our city was left behind and neglected by the Liberal government. Now, when the Conservatives got elected, they made a lot of promises to make things better. But I've asked the people of Brampton, have things gotten better? Has your car insurance rates dropped? Does your city have an additional hospital? Can you or your children afford a home? And the answer, time and again, is no. And the Conservative government had four years. They had a full mandate to help our city, and they chose not to because they don't care about Brampton and they don't care about you. And the people of Brampton, they're fed up. They know that we deserve better. We deserve to live in a city where going to the hospital doesn't mean being treated in a hallway. They deserve to live in a city where paying car insurance doesn't cost more than your household mortgage. They deserve to live in a city where owning a home isn't a dream. And that's what we in the NDP are fighting for. We are fighting for a better Brampton with three hospitals and three emergency rooms where people pay fair car insurance, where people can afford a home. And mark my words, we are not going to stop fighting until it happens. Thank you, Speaker. Appreciate it. 
Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. The rebuild of the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital has been a top priority since becoming MPP for Niagara West. I was born in the hospital. I campaigned for the hospital, and I'm very excited to share with you, Speaker, that in a few short weeks, construction will begin on this new hospital. <laughs> Yesterday, Hamilton Health Sciences and Infrastructure Ontario announced the selection of Elliston Infrastructure as the prefer a preferred proponent to build our new hospital. This team was selected after going through an RFP process including more than 5,500 technical requirements set out by Hamilton Health Sciences in partnership with the Ministry of Health and Infrastructure Ontario. It was a challenging task to, to, to select one of the three successful applicants from uh, these high quality and unique submissions, but once complete, the builders will build a new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital that will provide patients and families with a modern, up-to-date facility with a capacity for more beds a larger 24-7 emergency department that will provide more space for staff and patients, maternal and newborn services to provide high-quality care during labour and birth, and a modern surgical suite to deliver care with the best technology available. I also want to thank our local community leaders, supporters, volunteers, doctors and nurses, and frontline health care workers for their tireless dedication to this very important regional project in Niagara West. I also want to pay tribute to the Honourable Christine Elliott, the Deputy Premier and the Minister of Health a champion for better patient care in Ontario, and a strong advocate for our new hospital. Together, with the support of many ministers and the entire government, as well as Premier Ford, we will build the new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. Next member statement, the member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Speaker, today I'd like to make the House aware of a near tragedy. Yesterday, er, on Bay today, it uh, was reported uh, which happened on Friday. Tamiskaming OPP say they got multiple calls Friday afternoon after a school bus was almost hit by a carelessly dri driven transport truck on Highway 11 in Harley Township. The township is just north of New Liskert, and I would like to quote, investigation revealed that a commercial motor vehicle was passing unsafely, causing a school bus to take evasive action to prevent a collision, end quote, says Constable Jennifer Smith. A short time later, the transport was stopped by police on Highway 11 in Tamiskmi Shores, and the driver was charged. It is not known if there were children on the bus at the time. This is not an isolated incident. I have one constituent on Highway 11. Twice, the transports have passed the bus flat as, a, as the lights are flashing. He calls, and he follows them into Latchford, where the police stopped them. This happens constantly. The vast majority of commercial vehicle drivers are professional, are good at their job. But there are those that seem to be so in focused on getting where they're going that they don't really care about the rules. And we need to make sure that they're enforced, that they're properly trained, because at some point, lives are going to be lost if we don't. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements this morning, and I'm very pleased to inform the House that one of our page captains today is Elia Karen Sagiv from the Riding of York Centre, and we have with us today at Queen's Park her mother, Tammy Karen, and her sister, Eden Karen. Also, we're joined today by the parent of the other page captain today, Leah Elder, from the Riding of Bruce Gray Owen Sound, her father, Wayne Elder. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here. <laughs> Government House Leader has a point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you seek it, you will find unanimous consent to allow members to make statements in remembrance for the late Mr. Walter Elliott, with five minutes allotted to Her Majesty's government, five minutes allotted to Her Majesty's loyal opposition, and five minutes allotted to the independent members as a group. Government House Leader is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to allow members to make statements in remembrance of the late Mr. Walt Elliott, with five minutes allotted to Her Majesty's government, five minutes allotted to Her Majesty's loyal opposition, and five minutes allotted to the independent members as a group. Agreed? Agreed. I recognize the member for Merton.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just before I begin, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everyone happy International Women's Day, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm, of course, honoured to rise today to pay tribute to the former member of Provincial Parliament, Walt Elliott. He was elected in 1987 and served until 1990 in a newly formed riding of North Halton under the Honourable David Peterson's government. He was born in 1933 in a small community in Bruce County, and everyone knew him as Walt. Before his time in public office, he was a dedicated educator, helping to shape the minds of young people. Walt received an undergraduate degree from McMaster University and received his Master's of Education from Brock University. He worked for 28 years as a high school math teacher, principal, and a department head. Walt was committed to leading and supporting the next generation and was valued mentor and role model for many students who came through his classrooms. In addition to his exceptional career in education, Walt also worked as a financial advisor, small business owner, and a farm manager. And yet, on top of all this, Mr. Speaker, Walt still always found the time and energy to volunteer within his community. He was devoted to young uh, public service and was consistent and well-known presence in Milton. He was actively involved in many community organizations, including the United Way Children Aid Society, Halton Recovery House, Ontario Agriculture Museum, Halton Region Museum, and the Milton Historical Society, Mr. Speaker. He valued volunteerism and always knew when needed members of the community would step up to help no matter what the project was. Walt once said, and I quote, I believe that a spirited group of volunteers from the Milton area could go a long way in assuring the continued life of the museum, end of quote. He knew then what we all know now, that Milton and Ontario spirit is strong and resilient. Walt always encouraged civic engagement in young people, which he demonstrated himself as an organizer and a fundraiser. He first ran for the Ontario Legislature in 1977 against an incumbent, the Honourable James Snow. But it was in 1987 that Walt won his seat in a newly redistributed riding of North Halton to sit in the 34th Parliament. In his time in public office, Walt sat on several important committees and served as the chair to the Standing Committee on General Government. In 1989, Walt was appointed by the Premier of Ontario as the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Housing, a role that I too served here in this provincial government, Mr. Speaker. Walt always spoke passionately in the legislature about his community and the people of Milton. He was committed to representing and fighting for the interest of his riding and understood the difference between the community from urban to rural areas. In his first speech in the chamber, Walt discussed the priorities of his constituents in North Halton. As our community continued to grow, he focused his efforts on protecting our environment and the Niagara Escarpment, which made up 30% of the riding at the time. In his growing community, he highlighted the need for advancing the delivery of health care services to the region. He also supported the need for more elementary and secondary schools, Mr. Speaker, the construction and accessibility for colleges and universities. Our community has grown into a well-educated and young and vibrant and continues to grow each and every day. Walt received many recognition over the course of his life, including Lifetime Achievement Award from the Milton Chamber of Commerce in 2005, a medal for his community service for the 125th anniversary of Confederation, and a Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal from the Governor General of Canada. Walt was married to his wife Anne for 60 years and had two children. In his retirement, he enjoyed spending time with his granddaughters. Mr. Speaker, 
Walter Elliott was a pillar of our community, a selfless volunteer, a public servant, and I thank him for everything he did to make our town of Milton and the region of Halton amazing place that it is today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The member for London West. Thank you very much, Speaker. It is a privilege to rise on behalf of the official opposition to pay tribute to Robert Walter Elliott, MPP for Halton North from 1987 to 1990. Speaker, I rise not only as NDP House Leader, but as a member of the unofficial cross-party education caucus that brought so many of us to Queen's Park. Walt's passion for public education as a high school math teacher, a principal, a department head, and a mentor to a generation of students, as well as his lifelong commitment to the Liberal Party were the animating forces that drew Walter to provincial politics in the first place. Walter first ran for the Ontario Legislature in the 1977 provincial election in the riding of Oakville, but lost to PC incumbent Jim Snow. Never one to give up a fight, he ran again in the 1981 election, losing again by an even greater margin. Walter sat out the next election but couldn't be held back in 1987, running successfully in the redistributed riding of Halton North, serving as MPP and Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Housing from 1989 to 1990. Walter's motivations were not only to improve the lives of the young people he worked with, but most of all, to improve his community. His Hansard record shows that Walter was ahead of his time in many of the issues he championed, including transit, arts and culture, occupational health and safety, and more. One of my favourite quotes is from 1989 when he said, in my opinion, the golden rule for industry from now on should be, if your product has to be landfilled, do not make it. I am talking about cars, refrigerators, tires, batteries, and so on. The theme for the 1990s should be no more landfill. While his retirement from politics in 1990 may not have been planned, Walter enthusiastically took up participation in community life, becoming actively involved in fundraising and other activities for a range of community organizations, including the United Way, Children's Aid Society, Ontario Agricultural Museum, Halton Region Museum, Milton Historical Society, Halton Recovery House, Canadian Region of the Scottish Elliot Clan Society, McMaster University, Oakville Art Society, and Grace Lutheran Church in Oakville. Upon his death in June 2020, in his 87th year, Walter was fondly remembered by those whose lives he touched. Memorial posts provide insights into the quality of his character and the man he was. Quote, his energy and commitment to the United Way and so many other community endeavors was tremendous. Milton is a much better place for his presence and contribution. Quote, Walt always showed us what were the important things in life and encouraged us to look after those things to the best of our ability. Quote, he was a dedicated community supporter and a charming, informed man. Quote, we were impressed with his devotion to public service and constant optimism. The world needs more Walt. And quote, he was Milton's greatest citizen. Of Walter's term in the Ontario Legislature, former Speaker David Warner said, Walter was deeply respected on both sides of the aisle. During his time at Queen's Park, he served in quite a few positions of responsibility, always serving with honour and distinction. To his beloved wife Anne, with whom he celebrated 60 years of marriage before his passing, to his dear children Paul and Tina and their spouses Evelyn and Joe, to his cherished granddaughters Emily, Violet and Katie, thank you for sharing your husband, your father and your grandfather with us, with the people of Halton North and with the province of Ontario. Thank you.
Thank you. The member for Guelph. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour today to rise and pay tribute to Walter Elliott, the former Liberal MPP for Halton North, for his distinguished public and community service. Mr. Elliott's accomplishments were very impressive. He was a teacher, principal, businessman, community leader, volunteer, proud supporter, mentor to so many students and young people, as well as an MPP in this legislature. He was a dedicated husband of 60 years to his wife, Anne, and a proud father and grandfather. Mr. Elliott first ran for office in 1977 and again in 1981, and I can relate to the fact that it took him 10 years to finally get elected in 1987. Walter made the most of his time here at Queen's Park, chairing the General Government Committee and serving as the parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Housing. And I just got to say, reading about Walter's love of the Niagara Escarpment, I could relate to. Uh, from his home community in Milton, the Escarpment is spectacular and beautiful, and he fought to protect it. Uh, speaker, one of his colleagues described Walter as an elder statesman at the heart of positive, progressive politics. And when his time was done at Queen's Park, he continued to serve his community in so many ways, receiving lifetime achievement and community service awards. So I want to say to Walter's family, thank you so much for sharing Walter with his community, our province, and our country. Ontario is a better place because of his service. Member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Speaker. And today we honour the life of Walter Elliott, member of provincial parliament for Halton North from 1987 to 1990. He also served as a parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Housing and the Peterson government and other duties inside this legislature. Most importantly, Walter was a passionate educator. He was a high school math teacher, head of math department in several Ontario schools, vice principal, principal, and most importantly, a mentor to students. After obtaining his bachelor's degree from McMaster University, Walter also went on to complete a master's in educational administration from the University of Brock. He, his love of education carried on to, into his career in politics. He was also active in his community, including things like the United Way, the Children's Aid Society, the Ontario Agriculture Museum, the Halton Region Museum, his alma mater, McMaster University, among many things. Walter worked hard to earn the opportunity to represent the people of Halton North. He worked really hard. It took him a few runs to get here to Queen's Park, but as they say, persistence pays off. So as I like to do um, when we have the opportunity to do these tributes is go through Hansard and read people's Hansard. And it's interesting how much the words that we use define us. And we can tell years later what kind of person uh, was standing up and speaking. It's clear that he had a passion for education, health care, but most importantly, he had a, a passion for the, the environment. More specifically, he cared very deeply about protecting the Niagara Escarpment. I also found that he had a sense of humor. His first words in the legislature reflected that. Since I have been about 16 years in hard work to assume a place in this house, I, would, I really would like to invoke something I always promised myself. It was that the first time I rose in this house, I would pay someone a compliment. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure to pay a compliment to the member for Durham East on the length of his speech. <laughs> another, another in response to, a, I guess, a heckle from the other side of the house. So to the member from Scarborough West, I recognize that I am superannuated, but I have never thought of myself as old, even as a math teacher. His first speech in the legislature was a response to the budget of the day. While it was clear that education, health care, and infrastructure were important to him, it was evident that he cared very deeply about his own riding of Halton North. And he remembered that thing, or he lived by that thing that we all need to live by here, which is he never forgot where he came from, who sent him, 
and what they send him to do. Walter had humility and could be self-deprecating. In response to his first speech, which I just mentioned, he said, I would just like to indicate that my first main speech in the legislature was not nearly the traumatic experience I thought it was going to be. I enjoyed it very much. So I understand that Speaker Warner talked about how he was respected. It's because of the words that he chose, the words that he chose. And I want to say, most importantly, above all the words and all the things that we do here, most of all, Walter was a devoted father, husband, grandfather, and brother. And I want to say to his wife, Anne, his children, Paul and Tina, his granddaughters, Emily, Violet, and Katie, and brother and sister, Brian and Audrey, thank you very much for sharing with us. Thank you, Speaker. I want to thank the members for their eloquent tributes as we give thanks for the life and public service of Walt Elliott.